Hi, I'm Molly from Doodle. Today we're learning how to solve problems involving direct proportion. Let's get started. As a reminder, two values are in direct proportion when they increase or decrease in the same ratio. For example, the cost of donuts increases in the same ratio as the number of donuts there are. If you buy two donuts, they will cost double the amount that one donut costs. First, let's connect what we already know, which will help us with the rest of this lesson. We're going to do that by joining the values that have been scaled proportionally. If one unit equals four pounds, we can multiply four pounds by three to find the cost of three units. Four times three equals 12, so three units must cost 12 pounds. Let's do the same for the others. When one unit costs five pounds 20, three units must cost three times this. Five pounds 20 times three equals 15 pounds 60. When one unit costs two pounds 50, three units cost three times as much. Two pounds 50 times three equals seven pounds 50. This means that when one unit costs one pound 20, three units must cost three pound 60. Let's check our answer. Excellent, we've correctly joined the proportionally scaled values. Now that we've briefly recapped proportional scaling, we're ready to discover our new learning of how to solve problems involving direct proportion. We are reminded that two values are in direct proportion when they increase or decrease in the same ratio. Ada says, I can show that the amount of apples, A, and the cost, C, are in direct proportion using this symbol. So, this means that A is in direct proportion to C. We can complete this sentence because we know that double the amount of apples cost double the amount of money. Great job, that's our second doodle star. We're told in this instance that one apple costs 52 pence. So to work out two apples, we need to double 52p. 52p times two equals one pound and four pence. So two apples must cost one pound and four pence. Excellent, we're doing really well. Ada and Sam are following a recipe for pancakes. We can see from the recipe that to make six pancakes, they need 120 grams of flour and two eggs. Ada is calculating the number of eggs she needs to make 18 pancakes. She says the recipe makes six pancakes. 18 is three lots of six, so I will multiply the ingredients in the recipe by three. So following Ada's instructions, we need to multiply the two eggs by three. Two times three equals six. So 18 pancakes will need six eggs. Let's check. Great work, that's another doodle star. Sam wants to make 10 pancakes. We're told here that the amount of flour is directly proportional to the number of pancakes. Remember, this symbol means directly proportional the two values increase or decrease in the same ratio. Sam says, I can't double or triple the recipe, so I will start by finding the amount of flour I'd need to make one pancake. We need to decide which calculation will solve this. We know that six pancakes need 120 grams of flour. So to work out how much flour one pancake will need, we need to divide 120 by six. We're nearly there, well done. Jay says, if one pancake needs 20 grams of flour, I can multiply by 10 to find how much is needed for 10 pancakes. So we know that one pancake needs 20 grams of flour after dividing 120 grams by six. Our final step is to multiply by 10 to work out how much flour would be needed for 10 pancakes. So 20 times 10 equals 200. 
10 pancakes need 20 grams times 10, so they will need 200 grams of flour. We've done an excellent job of that discover section. Now let's explore a final problem involving direct proportion. Lena has recorded her walking and running times in two tables. We need to choose the table that shows a directly proportional relationship between distance and time. Let's start by looking at table A. Remember, for it to be directly proportional, the values need to increase or decrease in the same ratio. This means that they would need to have been multiplied by the same number each time. Let's check. So, 5 kilometres took Lena 60 minutes to walk. 5 has been multiplied by 12 to get 60. 10 kilometres took Lena 120 minutes to walk. 10 has also been multiplied by 12 to get 120. 15 kilometres took Lena 180 minutes to walk. 15 kilometres has also been multiplied by 12 to get 180. This means we can be sure that table A shows a directly proportional relationship. This means that table B must not show a directly proportional relationship. Great job! We're told here that D, distance, is directly proportional to time, T when Lena is walking, because the distance and time are increasing in the same ratio. The final part of this lesson asks us to calculate how long it would take Lena to walk 25 kilometres. Remember, we multiplied each distance by 12 to calculate the time it took Lena to walk them. We need to do the same with 25 kilometres. How long do you think it would take Lena to walk 25 kilometres providing she continues to walk at the same pace. When you're ready, take a look at the description box to see what the answer is. If you enjoyed this video and would like to try some questions, create an account to try Doodle Maths for free. Visit doodlelearning.com or click the link in the description box below to get started. For more maths guides, like and subscribe to our channel. Thanks for watching.